are the catalysts of change. Without us, there is no change. When I was 16 years old, I lived in Serbia with a civil rights lawyer named Natasha. This was in 2006, seven years after the Kosovo War, and seven years after NATO bombed Serbia for crimes against humanity. This was also the year that Montenegro separated from Serbia, and Slobodan Milosevic, the country's former dictator and perpetrator of those crimes against humanity, died while awaiting trial at The Hague. Needless to say, it was a politically heated time, and I was there with my camera capturing it all. On the weekends, Natasha would go take me to work with Bosnian refugees right outside Belgrade. These refugees were left over from the Bosnian War of the early 90s, where over two million people were displaced. Working with these refugees forever altered the way that I see the world, because I got to put a name to that statistic, and a human behind that headline. And that human connection would later become the through line that is now my work. Fast forward to 15 years later, it is now my job to create that human connection. As a documentary photographer and filmmaker, I work with humanitarian issues around the globe, focusing on women, children, and human rights. These images were taken at a UNHCR refugee camp in Uganda in 2016. These South Sudanese women share a story with over 82.4 million displaced people globally. And that number is growing every single day due to war, violence, persecution, and even climate change. At the end of 2018, the first of many migrant caravans reached the San Diego-Tijuana border. Stories about women and children fighting for their lives were quickly overshadowed by stories of rapists, killers, and murderers. I wanted to tell a different story. A story about strength, bravery, and survival, because when I work with these women, that is what I see. I've intentionally left out the names to these stories. This woman and her husband were recruited by the gangs of Honduras and fled to escape certain death. In under two days' notice, they packed up their entire lives and fled with the 7,000 people of the migrant caravan headed for the U.S. border. This mother of three had to choose between eating or dying, and when she didn't have enough money to pay the gangs, she fled. After this woman's husband was killed by the gangs, she left Central America with whatever she could carry. This included one child and two she had to leave behind. She told me, God willing, one day she will go back for the other two. Even if these women make it to the United States, their chances of getting asylum are incredibly low. The reality is, they'll be sent back to their home country where they'll be targeted by the gangs and potentially killed. I knew it was important for people to see what these women were experiencing while trying to seek refuge in the United States, so I expanded my work into a feature documentary called Seeking Asylum. This is a still from our film and our main character, Kenzie. Seeking Asylum bears witness to the endless deterrence migrants face while petitioning for asylum in the United States. The migrant journey has never been easy and is only made harder by our dismantled asylum system. Kenzie's journey gives a face to the migrant journey and to the thousands of people seeking asylum every single day. Her story shows why there is an urgent need for asylum reform and why this is a part of the American dream we cannot afford to lose. Can we tell a different story? Can we push the boundaries of our own worldviews and find that human connection? I believe we can. I believe that we can change the cultural narrative by opening ourselves up to this human story and finding the humanity behind the headlines. Thank you very much.